So I could sell my Leica M9 for around $3,000. And if I bulk rolled at $4 a roll, that's 750 rolls of Foma pen, 27,000 pictures. Okay. Since 2015, I've always had a digital Leica around. First, it was the M240, then the MD, and then the M10 when it came out, and finally I went back to the M9. And regardless of how many rolls of film I'd shoot, digital was always there, my safety blanket. Something I could reach for when I really needed it. Well, now it's gone. I'm all in with film. But why though? Why not just keep both, right? Well, it has to do with momentum. My journey into the Leica M system, it started with an M6 and I so quickly fell in love with the manual rangefinder experience that I wanted a digital version of it for work as well. So I got the M240. Back then, I was using more professional cameras on jobs. Canons, then Fuji's, and then Sony's. Cameras with amazing autofocus. So switching to a fully manual focus camera, that was so scary. And it might sound funny right now, but you have to understand that when I started out, I spent countless hours practicing the skill set of using autofocus. What? How do you even practice autofocus? Isn't it just automatic? Well, cameras just a few years ago weren't as smart as they are today. Back then, you couldn't just set it to eye detection mode and then press and hold one button and have the camera take care of everything for you. If you wanted to track a subject, say at the corner of the frame, you'd have to move your focusing point there beforehand. And so I remember having to practice turning the dial the exact number of times to quickly set the focusing point to where I wanted it to be before the thing would happen as quickly and as precisely as possible. Well, that's a trip down memory lane, but that skill of using auto focus to get the picture that was an essential part of my skill set as a photographer and letting go of something that felt so essential something that felt core to my skill set and my ability to get the photo i remember the first time when i showed up for a shoot and all i had was my m240 my heart was just pounding in my chest now that was a beautiful experience but like everything the more you do something the more competent you get at it and it even got to a point where i began to trust manual focusing more than autofocusing. Now that was one season in my journey, but that turning point of letting go of autofocus, especially in paid, fast moving, high stakes situations, that was a huge one. Well now, just like back then, I find myself needing to let go. But this time, of digital. But why though? Why not just hold on to both? Well, for the longest time, I did. Since the start till now, always having that film and digital option available to me, I would usually switch between them depending on practicality, where I was in life. For some months, if I had the headspace to develop, to scan, I'd shoot film. But if that backlog began to build up and I just really needed a break, I'd switch to digital just for a while, maybe a few days, sometimes a few weeks. And after that, I'd go back to film. But knowing that I always had that safety blanket available to me, of having digital within reach at the back of my mind, that was always comforting. And I knew that if I suddenly had a last minute trip or a last minute shoot, occasions where I might just need to shoot a large quantity of pictures, the digital Leica was always there to cover it. And it was not just a safety blanket for shooting volume, but for money as well. Because say for a certain month, if I didn't want to spend so much money on film, knowing that I have the option to pause, to switch the camera that could still allow me to engage with photography without incurring any additional costs. That gave me a sense of financial comfort. So all this while, I'd be going between them for different periods of time. And I even went through a season where I'd go out with both film and digital, shooting most things with digital, but then here and there swapping to film as well. But that hybrid shooting style of film and digital, even though it seemed fine for the first few years, as time went on, something about it always seemed to not sit quite right with me. Something felt a bit off and I could never put my finger on it. I couldn't find the words, but I knew that when I switched between film and digital, especially when I did so loosely and indiscriminately, it created a sense of dissonance within me, a sense of distraction, 
a lack of focus. Until one day, I realised that it had to do with the headspace that each medium put me in, which was inevitably created due to the fundamental differences between these two mediums, film and digital. You see, when you're out shooting, there's this constant fluctuation of excitement and impulses going on within you as you experience the world. You might enter a new place and feel nothing, then something might just catch your eye and that impulse, it will spike just by a bit. Just a small sense of excitement, of curiosity. And so you go investigate it and suddenly another thing happens and that impulse peaks slightly higher again and it moves from curiosity to excitement and then from excitement to a sense of urgency. And if you have been also actively going out into the world to make pictures for a period of time, I'm sure you'll know what I mean. As long as you're being conscious and attentive to what's happening around around you, looking with intent, with openness, with a desire to make a picture, this sense of a constant fluctuation of impulses always occurs, both consciously and subconsciously. And by the way, the subconscious part of this is also a really beautiful thing. It's not always a logical impulse. Sometimes it's a physiological one as well, an excitement, a need to make a picture that you can actually physically feel in your body as a sensation. But so with these impulses going on in the background, right, with a digital camera, I've noticed that it gives me this tendency, it predisposes me to capture almost every impulse without needing to care about its quantity or its quality. And I could even be using the closest digital camera there was to film, like a Leica MD with no screen, but because it was digital, it was inherently free. There was no marginal cost to it. It didn't cost me anything to make the next picture. The tiniest impulse would come and I just make a picture of it. Just shoot, right? Why think so much? Because you never knew. If you go back home later, you might see that the picture might just be good. But I realized that it's precisely that knowing with film that what you have in your camera, it is limited. It's really scarce. It really costs you something to make the next picture. That knowing predisposes you to treasure your pictures and it effortlessly creates a desire in you to care about it just a bit more, to want to make each picture count. And because of that, you'll inevitably begin learning that skill of discernment. The skill of carefully reading those internal impulses, both the quantity of it, sensing their peaks, their pulses, their highs, their lows, the way they fluctuate, but also the quality of those impulses as well. Learning to distinguish between, oh, this feels like something, but I think it's not quite enough. I don't think I'll shoot. The difference between that and, oh, this doesn't look like much, but I think there is something here. It's worth a risk. It's worth a shot. It's worth my investment. And that discernment is a skill in and of itself, which film as a medium, it predisposes you to learn, but digital simply doesn't. And for me, I really learned this lesson when I went up in film formats. Because with 35mm film, with 36 exposures per roll, that's still quite a lot, right? But with 6-7, 10 shots per roll, you definitely begin to feel it. And when I finally moved to large format with two shots per sheet holder, that skill of deciding first before you shoot becomes a primary thing of refining your opinion, your compositional sensibilities, of moving first, looking at all the different perspectives to a scene, seeing which excites you the most. Then, and only then, do you set up your camera to make the shot. Learning decisiveness, when you're doing too much to nitpick things, knowing when you're doing too little. Now that could be an entire video on its own, but so the more expensive, the more scarce the resource you have is, the more learning to read those impulses becomes critical. And that discernment of when do I make the picture, when do I not? When is a scene simply just not enough? And when does it seem like it's not enough, but actually there is some treasure inside it? It's worth a shot. That 
is amongst the most valuable things that you could have as a photographer, which sadly I see is missing in a lot of intermediate photographers out there. But it's so valuable because it deeply connects you with your personal expression, your innate inclinations, what excites you both consciously and subconsciously. It's linked to your past, your experiences, what you value, what you care about, what you dream of, what you hope for. All those things, they come together to create this sensing within you in just a fraction of a second of knowing that, yes, I want this picture right now. And learning to hear that out of all the noise, learning to hear that voice is such a big part of finding your voice as a photographer. Now, yes, you could try to port that thinking over to digital. You can try to be aware of it, to try to make your shots count a bit more. And you can even do your best to replicate the experience of shooting film, like buy a Leica MD or taping up the screen behind your camera and just trying to pretend that it's a film camera, which I did for a long period of time. But just the knowledge that you just just know that the next picture is inherently free, no matter how you try to game it, to trick yourself, to impose false limitations on it. It's just not quite the same. Now, it's really important to caveat this very clearly. I'm not saying that film is better than digital. Each medium has strengths and weaknesses on its own. With digital, for some people, that freedom and the ability to explore everything, to experiment freely with new ideas without feeling this sense of, oh, I'm wasting my money. That freedom may just be the best thing for your photography, depending on where you are in your journey. So I'm not recommending that you or everyone to go ditch digital for film. It really depends on where you are. But for me, as I was switching between them, I didn't even know how to articulate all of this at that time, but I knew I was going in circles, taking one step front and one step back, distracted and confused. Because every time I would switch, there would be like this flip-flopping in my head. Every time I'd spent a prolonged period of time shooting film, it was like I was building up momentum, the internal perceptions and sensitivities to those impulses. And the longer I stayed with film, the more they were slowly being fine-tuned. But then the moment I'd switched to digital, it was like all that momentum was interrupted. And the longer I stayed on digital, that skill set of impulse recognition slowly became duller and duller. And by the time I went back to film, it would feel like, uh, did I, am I a few steps behind from where I left off? And it would feel like that fine-tuned motor skill is just somehow a bit blunter. So what really gave me some clarity on this was understanding the real reason, the deeper reason of why I was still shooting digital. One day I paused and wrote it all down and I realized that my need to shoot both digital and film was actually due to fear. The fear of missing out, the fear of not being able to get the best shot possible with all the limitations of film, the fear of using an inherently scarce resource because I might just one day run out. But in response to that fear, the question arose, if you make 10 pictures of a scene with digital, but only one with film, do you think you'd be able to get that one picture that you really wanted. The one picture that mattered the most to you. And that question stumped me. Because while it was tremendously scary, it also sounded so familiar, just like letting go of that safety blanket of autofocusing, of bursting 10 frames per second and then choosing one later, letting go of that nine pictures, trusting that I'd be able to get that just one, the one that I really wanted, but this time on film, that required another step of faith. And so I began testing that question, finding out for myself, is it really possible? Could I let go of my high volume digital shooting, working the scene, taking pictures from this angle, that angle, shooting and shooting, instead of doing that, could I move first? Could I decide first? Could I time it just right so that I could capture just one picture, the one that I really wanted. And the more I explored that question, the more my M9 stayed in the dry cabinet because I realized that it could indeed be done. All it required was just a bit more patience, a bit more poise, more control, calmness, the ability and the willingness to accept the risk that I might miss the shot. And being okay with that, 
But in return for that greater sense of risk, the reward, the payoff, was just that much more personally valuable. And making that decision was probably the best things that I could have done because the more I shot with just film, the more focused I became, the more free I felt, the more that insatiable need that I oftentimes feel with a digital camera when I enter a space that just overwhelms my senses, that insatiable need to make a picture of everything, that slowly went away. And I learned that, hey, if I go out today and if I only make one picture, a single picture that genuinely and authentically spoke to me, a picture that I felt like I really needed to make, then I would have recorded everything that I would have needed to record for that day. And even if I did miss on that 20 other pictures, that 100 other pictures that I might have gotten on digital, could I believe that the one that I did get would be beautiful and it would make up for all the rest that I missed. That's all for today's video. Let me know any of your thoughts in the comment section below. I'd love to have a chat with you there. Subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.